Hey and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. So today we're going to be creating this stylized looking potion. So first let's align the camera by pressing number pad 1, then control alt number pad 0. Then I want to just move this camera a little bit closer to the center, like so. Okay, so we need to mo uh, model a potion bottle. So if you're comfortable with modeling things yourself, you can go ahead and model yourself a potion bottle and jump ahead to around uh, eight minutes in and we get to the texturing. But if you want to follow along, just shift A, add a UV sphere and scale it up. Tab to go into edit mode. And we just want to select this vertex here, right click, and then hit control plus on the keyboard, which will increase the selection. Now let's press X and then we just want to delete the faces. Change this to edge select mode and hold alt and right click. So I'll just zoom in and show you that. Hold alt and right click so we can select this whole edge. Now we can press E to extrude, but as soon as we do that, it's not really constrained. So if we press Z, we can constrain it to the Z axis. So it's only going to be moving up. It's a little bit small, so let's just move this a little bit higher and then press E to extrude. Now if we right click it will stay where it is and then press S we can scale this and then left click when we're happy. Now we can press E to extrude again and again make sure we constrain it on the Z axis to something like this. Again it's a very basic shape so if you want to make something that looks a lot more complex I would suggest doing so. It look a lot better than this but for the example I think it will work fine. So now let's add a bevel. Um, if we again hold Alt and then right click, select this ring here, Control B. And one thing we should know is when you're beveling things, don't go past say this line here. It will uh, it will mess things up later on. So Control B. Increase the uh, middle mouse wheel to add some smoothness to this. That looks good. And say this edge here as well. So anything that's very sharp, you just want to give that a little bit of a bevel. So same thing. So now it's a good time to save this, Control S, and you want to make sure you remember the file name that you saved this as. Okay, so let's add a modifier to give this some thickness. And we just want to give this a solidify modifier. If you can see, we press numpad 1 to go to front view, and we hit 5 to go into orthographic view, just so we can see things a little bit better. If we increase or decrease this thickness, it'll um, be thicker or thinner, depending on how thick or thin you want the thickness of this glass to be. So I think this is a good value here for this example. It's nice thickness. But again, if you're trying to model a real world item, you want to know how thick that glass is to actually make it look realistic. Okay, so I just want to move this around a bit. And if you want to play around with it before you um, apply the modifier, you do that now. So I'm just going to make this a little bit taller. And if you want to add some more bevels, go ahead and do that. But now we want to tab out of it and apply the modifier because we just want to fix this problem up here. You see these bottles don't really have that. So tab back into edit mode. Hold alt and then right click. It'll select this ring of faces. Same thing if we hold shift, alt and then right click. It'll just add this to the selection. And then we just want to press X delete those faces. So now we just need to fix this. And then let's again hold alt and then right click on this line here. And what we could do is just drag this up and kind of guess where it is or we can use a tool that's built in which is a snapping tool. So select this icon here which is a kind of a magnet and then next to it we can choose what the um, the snap element is. So we want to do this by vertex. So when we drag this on the z-axis and we hover over um, a vertex, it will be to that height. So now we've already got these selected. If we hold shift, alt, and then right click on this line here, like so, we can select both of these. So now if we hit spacebar and type bridge, I'm going to select this bridge edge loops and this will just close the faces for us. Okay, so now again we want to make sure this has bevels too, since it's far too sharp. So press T to bring up the sidebar, and under shading we just want to make sure it's smooth shading. 
if you can see around here it's fine but near the neck of the bottle it doesn't look too good so what we need to do is go to modifiers so again make sure you select the modifier tab select modifiers and then we just want to use edge split and straight away it does a really good job but if you do need to refine it just play around with this split angle and things will become more smooth or less smooth depending on what you need so again make sure we save that as well and now we can do the inside of the bottle so tab back into edit mode and we want to uh, in fact let's first turn off snapping and let's flatten this bottle here so right click on this vertex and if we press O to enable proportional editing if we drag this on the Z axis and increase the uh, the fall off with the middle mouse wheel you can sort of drag this into a way where it's a little bit flatter okay so now we've got that we need to um, do the inside of the bottle so what we can do since we've already got this selected or if you've not make sure you select this middle, middle vertex and if we hit control plus on the keyboard we just want to increase this selection we want to select all these faces let's keep going to around about here and if we press H to hide these and don't worry if we tab back out of edit mode we, we still see the faces it's just hidden whilst they're in um, edit mode okay so now this is the inside of the glass so if we right click on this vertex here do the same thing control numpad plus and this now we're selecting how high or how low we want the potion to be if you want the potion to be up here just select up there if you want the potion level to be around here then I think this is good so shift D to duplicate this and I'm going to press right click on the mouse so it doesn't move then I want to press P on the keyboard and we want to separate this by selection so now when we tab out of edit mode we have two objects so right click this one and then if we just move it around we can see press H to hide it now we've got this uh, underlying mesh so we press S just to scale it down a little bit okay so tab into edit mode I can see there's some problem with this, uh, the shading see this shading should be on the inside and this should be on the outside so if we A to select everything and then hit spacebar and then type flip and we just want to choose this second one here which is flip normals there we go okay so now we can just um, add a face to the top so I'm just going to turn off proportional editing by pressing O and then select this ring here and then E to extrude right click so it doesn't move and then S to scale and then I'm going to do it again E to extrude and then right click but this time I'm going to hit spacebar and then type merge hit enter or click this one here and then we want to merge at, um, at center so it just merges these together okay so that's the bottle and the potion done now let's oh by the way press alt h to unhide things um, should have mentioned that before but okay so let's get to the materials so go to the material tab add a new one and this is for the glass so let's rename this and this is going to be very basic let's just split this window and change this to the node editor Like so, press N to get rid of the side, we don't need that. Okay, so let's just select this one here, this diffuse and delete it. Shift A, go to shader, it's going to be a glass shader. Let's just plug this into the surface. Let's also check this so we can see a preview of it. So we need to set the index of refraction. So the index of refraction, as you can see, it refracts the what's behind it or what's through the glass. And every real world object has index of refraction. So I'll leave a link in the description to a, a, the index list if you want to create a specific type. But um, for this example, 1.450 is a good value. So I'm going to keep it at that. We also want to make sure the color is 100% white. So make sure that's 100% brightness. Now we can press H to hide this, select the liquid, add a new material, let's call this red potion. Okay, again we're going to delete this diffuse, now let's shift A, we're going to use, um, let's use the principled. It's quite large but we only need a few settings so let's plug this in okay so the first thing we need to do is probably change the color so let's go to base color and change this to red and we also want to make it shiny make it reflective so let's get rid of this roughness what we can do is set the roughness you can set the roughness to a value what you prefer but I'm going to, so I'm going to set this to zero 
also the specularity if you want to make this more specular or less specular you can do that too but I think around the base value is good for this example okay so let's change this viewport shade into material just so we can see if you wanted a very basic uh, red mana potion then there you go you're done but I want to make this look a little bit more interesting so shift A go to input then RGB and all this is is very basically it's a circular so it's what this is here but um, let's press control C while hovering over here just to copy this value and then press control V and then what we want to do is just duplicate this by pressing control uh, just press shift D to duplicate and then we just want to make this a little bit darker or in fact a lot darker and we want to use these two colors for the base color of this node so let's move this back shift A go down to color then mix RGB let's drop this here let's plug this color into color 1 and this color into color 2 and then this into the base color so now it's just combining them two colors it's just mixing them together to get this third color which we don't want so we want to mix it in a specific way shift a go to texture now any one of these textures will work and they're pretty good depending on which you know effect you're looking for and in fact you can combine a few of them together but for this example I'm going to use the noise texture which does a good job now normally you take a feed from the color but we just want to use the factor Plug this in here. Now you can see already what it does. So it's mixing the two colors but using the, the noise as the factor. So the scale you can play around with, the detail I'm just going to increase to 5 and the distortion we're going to be keyframing um, a little later on so it looks like it's moving around but we're going to be doing that later on. Shift A go to color. I want to add um, an RGB curves and drop this in here. You could also use a color ramp if you want, but I prefer to use RGB curves. But now I want to crunch these values and try and make this look a little bit darker and lighter. So some dark spots and some bright spots. Just by crunching these, you can see what, what happens here. Just keep crunching these values. And you don't want to go too far, sometimes it blows it out, but we want to try and pick out all the detail. Kind of like this looks pretty good so now when we distort this and keyframe it will kind of look as if the, the liquid's moving in fact let's do that now let's control s save this set this back to zero and since we're already on frame one what we can do is hover over this value and press i to add a keyframe then let's set the end frame i'm just going to use half of this so now you just want to jump to the end frame like so and then we can give this a value of two but I mean again you play around with these values depending on how far you want this to distort or how much you want to happen again hover over distortion and press I to add a keyframe and as you can see it's distorting um, the movement of this it will speed up and slow down so if you want this to be at constant speed you will need to go to the curves and just vectorize the curve okay so now we have these two you might want to model a cork as well just finish this off but if we give this a render to see how it looks yeah it looks quite disappointing and that's because it's in these lights um, most things or most people ask you know why doesn't the render look good and that's because you need more lighting so for this what you could do is just increase this to white or you could add um, add a HDR image which I'm going to do so here next to color select this icon and then select environment texture select open and I'm just going to use a basic HDRI Unfortunately, I can't share this HDR because I don't own the rights to it, but um, there's plenty online that you can pick up, you know, pretty much everywhere. Change this to slot 2, and then give this a re-render. Don't worry about the background, we're just using this for the lights and the uh, reflections. In fact, let's go to transparent, just get rid of this. Let's just re-render that now because we'll be adding our own background anyway later on but it looks, it looks a lot better and that's because of the lighting and the reflections obviously this is uh, terrible and this is a lot better but now we still need to add some more lights as well and if we just go back to 3D view depending on what light you want to use you can shift A, go to lamp, use a hemi lamp like so or if you want some more softer shadows you can use um, a sun lamp I think this is fine 
give this a re-render and we'll see that the liquid's a lot brighter and it looks it just looks a whole lot better. So let's just select this bottle and hide that again. What we can do as well is have a few different types of liquid. Um, for example, this is a diffuse one. This is not, you know, you can't see through it. But um, if we want to shift A, go to shader, we could use a glass shader or a transparent or even a subsurface scattering shader, you could use that too. Plug this into the surface and we can use the same setup we had a minute ago with everything else and just plug that in. I mean, it looks kind of dark here, but in a scene full of lights, it does look better. Also, we could do um, an emission one, so shift A, go to shader, go to emission, drop this in here, plug this in, and again, just using the exact same setup we had before, it's um, now glowing. <laughs> so it depends on what kind of potion you want to make and what sort of look you want to go for. But I think the diffuse one, the principal shader, looks okay, so I'm going to stick with that one for now. Plug this one back in. But again, use any one you want or create and go more complex and make your own, make something even cooler. Shift A, let's add in a plane. I'm just gonna quickly add in an infinity plane. If you don't know how to do that, I'll throw a link up at the top so you can go and check out how to do that. So I just wanna render that out now. But instead I wanna bring this into a different scene. So I need to prepare this. Select the liquid, select the glass, and also if you had any other objects, like for example a cork or any other objects you want to bring in, select that too. Now we press T to bring up the sidebar. Now we can press Control G. This has now made it a group, so we can just rename this group to bottle. In fact, now let's rename this. It's a potion, that's what it is. Rename this potion, and then also make sure we save this now, Control S. And that's it. So if we want to bring this now into another scene, let's just go to File, go to Open Your Scene. I'm going to open Recent since I already had this open. Okay, so for any of you who've seen my very first tutorial, you'll probably recognize this background. It's, um, it's a callback to the very first tutorial. So now we want to go to Append. I'm going to go to the, the file that you saved as. So I saved it as how to make a potion, but whenever you saved your file a minute ago, you want to make sure you find that file again. Go to group and just select the group. Now obviously it's a little bit too big so we just need to scale this down and move it over like so. Try and fit this into the scene. Again this was a very basic shape. I would suggest making something a lot more complex or some bottles that look more exotic looking. So hopefully this tutorial helped. If it did, be sure to give it a like. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.